Hey everyone, my name's Jeremy and this is the first in a series of lectures about Linux. I've just logged into the system here. This system is called Cebu and I want to have a look at the files which I have currently on my system here. As I type, you can see that things I type are going to be reflected in the screen here. And the first one I'm going to type is PWD. Enter. PWD stands for Present Working Directory, and you can see that when I execute this command, it prints out the directory in which I'm currently located on the file system. This is in fact my home directory, which is where I get dropped into as soon as I log into the system. So, the slash indicates the directory separator, this is the start, the root of the file system, and then the users directory, the subdirectory of that called staff, and the subdirectory of that called jsinger. What I want to do now is find out which files are in this directory. And to do that, I'm going to list the files using the command ls. ls stands for list. I'm going to press enter, and I can see a big long list of files. I'm going to scroll up here. So my file system is extremely disorganised, not recommended at all. Yes, I've got all different kinds of files here, loads and loads of them. Hopefully the first time you log into your Linux system, you won't have such a horrible mess of files. But what I want to do is to try and tidy up some of my files over the course of this video. So, let's list the Java source code files which are in this directory. I'm going to say ls space star dot java and this should print out all the source code files which match this expression. Star is the wildcard that indicates any sequence of, of characters. Dot java is, if you like, the file extension which is going to be at the end of the file name. Let's press enter to run this command. And we see listed for us here a set of Java files. There are about 10 Java files in my directory here. Right, what I'm going to do now is to make a new directory in which to store these files. The command mcdir will make a directory. We have to give it a name. I'm going to call this directory source code. How's that? Okay. Now, what I can do is I can move my files into the source code directory. mv best fit dot java source code. And when I press enter now, that first file has been moved into the source code folder. I can actually see the file moving if I say mv dash v. Let's try the next one. Crate.java into source code, and this will show me the file moving. There we go, I've moved crate.java into source code slash, that's folder separator, crate.java. This dash v here is called a flag to the command. It's an option which somehow modifies the behaviour of the command. v in this case stands for verbose, which tells me precisely what the command is doing. I can see a full set of the flags for mv if I look up the manual for mv, which I can do on the system. man mv will tell me all the possible options or flags for the mv move file command. Here we go, mv is that command that moves or renames files. Okay, rename source to desk or move sources to directory. We did a move of the source file to directory. Okay, and as I press space to scroll down here, or maybe use one of my um, cursor keys, I can see that there are lots of different commands. Oh, options, sorry. This is the one which we use, dash v. I could have also written out as double dash verbose, explain what is being done. Okay, and there's lots more information there. I'm going to press Q to quit the manual page. Okay. I'm still in pwd, my home directory. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to say ls star.java to print out all the Java source code files, and I should see one fewer file because one of them has already been moved into the, oh sorry, two of them have been moved, haven't they? The best fit and the crate have been moved into the source code folder. I'm going to change into the source code folder, cd, changes directory, source code, okay. And in here, I'm going to do an ls. And you can see in here, there are just two files, bestfit.java and crate.java. And now you can see that the prompt has changed to tell me I'm in the source code directory. I can go back to where I was before. I say cd space dot dot, 
which moves me up one level in the directory tree. And now I'm in the folder where I started, PWD, my home folder. This tilde, oops, sorry, this tilde sign here indicates that I'm in my home directory. Let's move another file. So I'm going to say ls star.java, okay, and the next one I want to move is credit to gpas.java. I'm going to say mv, and I start typing capital C R E, and I can't be bothered typing everything else, so I press the tab key. The tab key should be located somewhere on the left hand side of your keyboard. And look what this does. It auto completes as much as possible of the file that's unique. If I press tab again, it will show me the different possible options. So now I'm going to press dot and then again the rest of the file name is unique. So it auto completes for me. Using the tab key to auto complete file names does save a lot of typing. Um, move credit to gpas.java. I want to move this to source code. And again, I can just press S O U and tab, and there we go. Source code the directory is auto completed for me. It puts a slash after it to remind me that it's a directory. That's fine. That's optional, really. Let's press enter. Okay, there's another one gone. In fact, what I could do is move all the files in one go. ls star.java. There should be seven of them left now. Okay, and I'm going to say mv star.java, which should match all of them, into the source code directory. Okay, hopefully they should all be gone now. If I say ls star.java, and spell it right, ooh, no such file or directory. They aren't there. They've all been moved into the source code directory. cd, source code, enter, ls. And there they are. We also said that MV could be used for renaming. It's probably not a good idea to rename a Java source code file because the file name should be the same as the class name of the file which is defined in it. But let's just rename one as an example. MV bestfit.java. I use the tab key there to save some typing. And I'm going to call this new Java file. There we go. And now I say ls and oh look. It's moved there, which isn't there, new Java file. The files are being listed in alphabetical order. There are lots of other options for the ls command, and you can see them by typing, just as we did for mv, man ls, and have a look and see what the options are. Should we point out some interesting ones? Um, I've already got ls color selected by default in my options, so this uses uh, different colors, blue to indicate directories, green to indicate files. Um, what else might I want to do? I might use... Um, the dash l command, which gives me lots more information about the files. Um, I might use the dash t command, which would, sorry, switch, I should say not going to switch, which would sort the files uh, by the order in which they were last written to, rather than their alphabetical order. Okay, and I think that'll do for now. Oh, and dash one would just list one line per file. I'm going to press Q to quit out of there and say ls dash t. And we see the order has changed now. Okay, this is the order in which they were last written dash t dash one, one line per file. So I'm presuming that reflect example is the um, earliest, credits and GPAs is the latest to be modified. What we can actually do is just say ls dash l, and that will tell us the modification time. Yeah, so here we go. This tells us who owned the file, J Singer. Tells us the size of the file, currently in bytes. Okay, and then the date when the file was last modified. So you can see most of these were modified sometime a year or so ago. There's the name of the file. The stuff on the left is the file permission. We'll maybe talk more about that in a later video. Okay, good. Suppose instead of moving a file, I want to copy it. Well, there's another command I can use here. It's called CP. CP stands for copy. So I'm going to say CP new Java file.java. And I'm going to copy this back to best fit.java, which is what it was before. Now if I do an ls l, I see I've got a best fit.java. Okay. And also a new Java file.java. These both have the same size. They've got the same contents, right? But the best fit.java has only just been created today. And this is the time here. This is quite recent, so it specifies the time in the um, seventh column rather than the year in which it was created. So CP is for copy. And again, we could go and have a look at the options if we really wanted to and find out more about what we might do with copying. I'm going to press Q for now to quit out of the man page. CD dot dot puts me back in my 
home directory, I've moved up one level. And basically, I've showed you some very simple file manipulation commands. I'm going to show you one more for now. I think it will be useful. I'm going to show you how to compress a directory of files into a zip archive. OK, so I'm going to say zip. And then I need the name of my zip file. I'm going to call this java.zip. And into here, I'm going to put um, all my source code files. I've pressed Control A to go back to the beginning of the line. And I'm going to say zip dash A, which should save all the files in the source code directory into a new zip called java.zip. Oh no, dash A is an invalid command argument. Maybe it's dash R. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll say man zip, and I'll go and see what the, the argument of the flag is for zip to save all the files. Let's see. Zip. Um, hmm. Zip. I'm pressing the space bar to scroll down. Um, I think it might be dash R that I want. Scrolling down to try and find it. It's a long way down. Yes, here we go. Travel the directory structure recursively. OK. Good. I'm going to press Q to quit. And I'm pressing the up arrow here to go up to the previous command. And then I'm pressing the left arrow to go back to here. And I'm going to change that to R. Good. So now, hopefully, I've created a java.zip file, which is storing all these source code files in it. Good. I'll go and look at my zip. Now, actually, I won't be able to do this graphically here because I'm on a text terminal, but I could probably go and unzip the file and save them somewhere else. Let me just try and do that quickly. I'm going to say cp java.zip and copy it to a directory called slash tmp, which is a kind of temporary space for files. Let's move to slash tmp. Well, there's lots of files here, but one of them is my java.zip. There it's there. Now I'm going to say unzip java.zip. And it should have created inside here a folder called source code. This is different to the previous source code folder, but it should have the same contents. Oh, yes, it has. There's all the files in there. So I've shown you very briefly a way to compress files into a zip archive, which then you can email to someone or copy around or um, just uh, compress the size of your files in your file system. Right. What you're going to do for the rest of your tutorial time today is work through your own file system and use these commands in order to um, familiarise yourself with some of the basic concepts of file system manipulation in Linux. Thanks very much. See you in the second video. Bye.